Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So we are on Dave's TS-125. What are we doing tonight? We are going to check and see if it's holding pressure. We're going to do a quick pressure test. Well, not quick because I have to fabricate a part for it. But nevertheless, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to get you guys in the stand. And, uh, but before I do, please take a moment. Hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so when I post a video, you guys uh, you guys get the videos. So um, I'll get you guys in the stand. We'll get crack a lacking. It's going to be kind of a very um, informative video. And uh, there's, there's just a lot in this. So this is going to help you guys out. And I hope a great deal. So I'll get you guys in the stand and we'll get crack a lacking. Okay. So what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to pressure test the crankcase. And this is going to tell us if there's any vacuum leaks, um, if it's going to lean out right when we start it, what the case is going to be. So um, some of the tools that I'm going to be using are fabricated tools that I handmade. Um, and I'll show you one of them in particular in a minute. This plug. This plug right here is made out of a bearing race. And I don't remember what kind of bearing came out of. And then this right here was out of a plug. That I uh, had forced, I pressed into it using red Loctite, so it's in there, and this thing is solid. So basically, what this is, this is my exhaust plug, and if you guys watch my videos on the KE 100s and stuff like that, I have a flange that I use, and then this goes on the flange with a gasket on the other end, and I tighten this down. This right here is my exhaust port plug. Now I don't have one for the uh, TS, the Suzuki TS. Not yet. I'm going to be making one. Um, so this is going to fit up in here like so. So what I'm going to do is I can't use this one right here because the bolt holes are off. Okay. They're not going to bolt up in the right spot. And uh, that's okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flange and I'm going to cut the end um, on it. I'm not doing that tonight. But I'm going to cut the end on it so I can put a longer bolt because this right here is so close that it's not even funny that I can make it I can make it work but we're not going to do that tonight we're going to use a, a vise a clamp right on it and clamp this plug in like so with a gasket okay and this gasket will fit in here this will go in here this will here block off the exhaust and then I have to worry about the intake all right so that's my exhaust plug and then this right here what I'll be doing is I'll be turning the piston all the way to the bottom of the bore and I'll be using this. This is a Husqvarna tool. It's got a, uh, a ring on it. You can see it's threaded right here. And then there right here is where it pulls the vacuum. So this right here screws into the... It's also a piston stop. This is designed to keep the piston further down the bore. So that the uh, transfer ports are open. Which is what you want to do. Okay. So always clean up your tools uh, before you put them in a, a motor. Okay. So the first thing we have to do... Is I'm gonna look into the exhaust port and see where the piston and bring the piston downward. Alright, which that right there you're not gonna be able to see on camera, so I'm just gonna do it um, real quick. I'm gonna try to show it to you. Okay, so right there you can see into the cylinder. I got the piston down, and you can see how the piston's moving up right there. So I want the piston down right there, and I'm just turning the the um the clutch basket to move the crank. You can see right here's the crank. I can move it just very easily. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, you might notice that there was some dirt in the fins here. This is all going to be cleaned out because I'm going to paint this. But I don't want to do, I can't do anything until this engine's all sealed up. So that's, that's going to be tomorrow night. Um, this will be all painted. Okay, so let me get this uh, clamped in and I'll show you how I did that. Okay, so I got the engine chalked up here on this block of wood. Which, I'll tell you, 2x4 really comes in handy when you're working on these things. Alright, so what I did was I did modify my flange. The Kawasaki flange. I just cut the ears off. Because it's just a smidge off. Got the gasket, the O-ring. I've got my homemade plug. So we're going to put this in here like this. This is going to fit all like this. Gasket, plug I made, and then the flange. All in there. So put the gasket in first. Plug in there like so. Then I'm going to take a couple of screws. Now this is right here. This flange works on the Kawasaki's and the Suzuki's. Okay, a couple of bolts or screws, I should say. 
and I'll put this into where they go. And all I'm doing is making an exhaust plug. Just gotta plug the exhaust. Now, if you guys have your, if this is installed on your bike and you're doing this, you can literally loosen up the flange and take a piece of rubber and stick it in between the two and then sandwich it and then tighten it down. So you don't have to make something like this. This is something I do for bench testing. Because it's very important when you're doing a motor like this, you want to, because it had a lean condition before, you want to make sure you find it, make sure it's sealed up properly. I'm just going to make sure it's centered. Plug it in. Good. All feels good there. And then tighten this down. Tight there. Wow, this, this actually worked out pretty well. Okay, tight. Tight, okay. So, exhaust part is blocked. Hopefully it seals. I don't know, it's the first time using an adapter like that modified. Then this tube right here, this piece, goes into the spark plug hole. This is where the engine is going to be introduced to vacuum. Make sure it's tightened down. Not like super tight, but you want to get that in there fairly tight. Okay, like that. Good. Alright, and then we're going to go and plug the intake. Okay, so what I'm going to use to block this up is a rubber wedge. And these are what they look like. They're just a piece of rubber, about an uh, eighth inch thick. And these are uh, vacuum wedges. And that's going to fit like that. If you can't put it in like that, you can also pull it upwards. So it blocks off the hole. And then we're going to mount the carburetor onto it. All right, so we're just going to take a random carburetor that I have for these spikes. The other one's already cleaned up and rebuilt. This is one uh, that came off one of those parts motors. So we're just going to use this right here. Just trying to start the bolts, or the nuts, I should say. Get that tightened down. When you're tightening down these carburetors, you don't have to use the lock washes, no gasket, because the rubber's your gasket. And then you don't have to, uh, don't wrench it down, just grab it and give it, you know, just snug it, basically. Now, nothing, can, even if air got in here, like say you had this wide open, it doesn't matter because it's plugged off on the back using these rubber wedges. And these are here you can get from Husqvarna um vacuum wedges so okay so now the intake is sealed up the exhaust is sealed up now we can go ahead set up the vacuum pump and uh pull a vacuum on this motor okay so i got my mighty vac this is my vacuum gauge right here my vacuum pump and you can see i have a connection a barb fitting here goes into the hose it has another a reducer that goes from the uh big barb fitting to a small one where it connects onto here. So what you're going to want to do is you want to want to grab your vacuum gauge, stick your thumb over the end, and you want to see if it holds vacuum. Okay? For at least 30 seconds. What this does, okay, when you do this test, this lets you know that your vacuum gauge is sealed all the way up to here. Because if this gauge had a vacuum leak, you could think you had a vacuum leak here. This right here, basically this test rules out any possibility that the gauge is bad or incorrect, okay? So you want to make sure you always test your equipment first, even if it's brand new. That's how you test that. Um, I do remember this one did have a bad O-ring on the, uh, the piece here, so I have to go ahead and replace that. But uh, nothing, nothing too dramatic. So let me see if I can go ahead and do that real quick and then I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I got the vacuum gauge hooked up to here, and I want to show you guys something. All right, I have it switched over to pressure. That's the first step you want to do. And you want to get yourself a bottle of soapy water like this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray it down, because this is right here is where it would be a, uh, I'm pumping it up, and you can see the air bubbles coming out. If you can see that or not, yeah, let, me, let me see if I can show you guys. Blow you guys up a little bit. Let me get you into position. Hold on. Okay, you can see the air bubbles. So that means that this adapter that I made is not sealing correctly. So I got to pull that apart and get that to reseal. But if this thing had a leak, a lean condition, it could be around there. So that's what that is. And you want to spray around your spark plug um, adapter around the exhaust and the intake if you suspect a leak. So I hooked this up. I pumped it up. And uh, just to check, you know, the primary check. And I know I said it went down, not like super fast, but it was going down pretty quickly. And uh, I noticed I had to uh, fix this leak right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so now I replaced the gasket in here with the Suzuki style, not the Kawasaki style. And I just quickly retested it while I was trying to figure it out. So when I put pressure to it, you can see it holds. I just go right to the end of the bar and let's sit there for a minute and see if it, what it does. Okay, it's okay if they drop down a, sm a slight bit, but not. you don't want to see the thing fall off. So it should be holding there for like a minute. All right. And this right here is telling me that it holds pressure. Now, with this said, you do not want to overpressurize the crankcase. Because you can literally um, destroy the seal. So on the seal, there's a little a lip, a ring that goes around. If you put too much pressure, you can actually blow that ring out. Okay. And this thing is still holding quite nicely. All right. So we're going to let this out. It passed the pressure test. Now we're going to do a vacuum test. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go up to 7. 5. 6. 7. One more pump right there. And I'm going to let that hold for a minute. So right there. About 7. 7 or 8. You don't want to go much higher than that. Because you don't want to suck a seal in or a gasket. And then I let it down. I set it down. And see where it's at. So. Um. This right here is telling me that this engine is no longer going to have a lean condition at the crank seals or any of the gasket. This lets me know that when I put the two halves of the case together, that it's sealed, that my head is flat, my cylinder is flat, and the gasket in between is torqued correctly. Everything is sealed up. The intake is not going to leak. The exhaust, well, when I put the exhaust on, it's not going to have a leak there. The crank seals that I installed, I installed them correctly. This is a big check. Check, 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 check. Then tomorrow night, what I'll do is I'll clean all this crap up and I'll throw a coat of nice black paint on it and get rid of all this white oxidation. Let's take a look and see where we're at. And we are within spec, so we are good to go. See that right there? So we're good to go. So this thing is not going to lean out. Release that. I'm releasing the pressure on it now. And uh, this thing is all ready to go. So we vacuum tested it. We pressure tested it. I always do the pressure first. Then I do the vacuum. And here is why. Because if I do, when you do the pressure test, what you can do is you can spray this down. If you see a leak. Okay, that blows it out. If you, do a, if you pull a vacuum first and spray this down, now you're going to be su sucking soapy water in there. And that's going to go into your crankcase. You don't want that. So... This is literally the best way to do so. First thing you're going to do is pressure test it. You don't need to put a lot of pressure on these. Um, just to count about two, two pounds is more than enough. So I see this block right here where it says zero. I literally go to the black line right above it, like number one. And just, just enough so I can see the bubbles. Okay. Then when I pull a vacuum, I do about seven. And I let it sit. For a minute and if it drops down one bar i'm okay with that if it drops down three bars then i'm concerned and i'll recheck i'll check all my connections and all that but primarily 
I checked the gauge first, made sure that the gauge was operating as it should, and that the line had no cracks or leaks, and I did that by putting my thumb over it and pulling a vacuum on the vacuum gauge. So that's how I did that. So hopefully this helps you guys with it. Get creative, make a plug. You can make them out of anything. This is actually made out of a bearing, um, and I used a flange. And now what I did was I used a flange for a, uh, a Kawasaki onto a Suzuki, and it actually worked out quite well. And I didn't crush the gasket down because I didn't overly snug it, so that gasket's still good. And then, of course, this is the flange for a Kawasaki KE100, and I cut the ears off. And to cut that off, I used my awesome Milwaukee Fuel M12 cutter here. You can use a hacksaw if you have one. But I was able to, to cut it and modify it to make it. So, that's pretty much what you're doing, guys. You just, you know, this the tools are far and few and many not available. So, um, sometimes we have to fabricate our own stuff, but we do what we have to do. And I keep different flanges like this right here. This is for an older Kawasaki. Um, and this right here would bolt right there on the manifold. So sometimes I use these, this type of bolt pattern on low style. But it's the same all the way through. So hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully this helps you guys out. And do this procedure after you either split the case, put crank bearings, crank seals, head gaskets, jug gaskets, if you have the reeds out, whatever you have to do. This is an insurance policy. So when Dave gets this engine back, I can honestly say to Dave when he picks up his bike, that thing is tight. Okay? So hopefully that guy hopefully that helps you. So anyway guys, thank you for watching. I'm gonna clean up my mess. I'm out!